Are you encouraged or discouraged by what you saw against the Ravens on Sunday at M&T Bank Stadium? Let's start off with Al in Hyattsville. Al, thanks for calling. You are on the Hoffman Show. Encouraged or discouraged? What kind of vibe are you feeling on this Vibe Check Tuesday? Hey, what's going on, man? Um, I'm feeling really, really good. You know, you go into the house of one of the most prolific football teams right now in the league. You don't lay down. You fight. You lay some you lay some blows on them. You get them, you know, thinking twice about, yo, this kid going to run or you going to pass, you know, and they have to play you a certain way. You know, I'm okay with that. You know, they, they say pressure makes diamonds. You know what I'm saying? And Jaden needs a little pressure. He needs a little heat to him. He needs a little, you know, uh, a little headache every now and then so he can get better. You don't want him going through the league and not have any, you know, some, some, some obstacles he has to get over. This is one of those obstacles. This is one of those obstacles for the team to develop. The thing that I saw that made me most encouraged is they got a shot of Jaden on the sideline and the look on his face of fire. You can see the fire in him like, this ain't going to happen again. <laughs> and that's what you want to see. So to me, I'm good with it. You, you need these moments so he can build character and he can build his experience and his skill set. So, yeah, it sucks losing. We don't want to lose. Nobody ever wants to lose. You know what I'm saying? But at the same time, in those losses, you take something from it, and I think that the team definitely can take something from it and that uh, we'll build from here. Al, thanks for the call. Really appreciate it. And I, I think you hit a lot of great points there. And, you know, the Jaden competitiveness part of this, the fire, it's not just like, hey, he wants it. Like, he did it. That dude responded like time and time and time again. And yeah, they lost and ultimately they needed a little bit more. They needed one or two more plays. They needed obviously their defense to make a stop. But if Jaden can make a few more early in the game, then maybe something's a little bit different. But at the end of the day, like every time they were down, it feels like every time that Baltimore scored, Washington came right back. They get down two scores at one point in the game. They finally, you know, give up one and then Baltimore strings together a couple stops. And just when that thing could get way out of control it's like nope we're, we're back it's one score game again and uh, I think that one made it uh 27 20 um and so at the end of the day like they as an offense responded and something that I want to I'm just gonna hit say hit this real quick uh before I take the next call so I don't forget man you want to talk about competitiveness from a play calling standpoint Cliff Kingsbury in this game called so much stuff and what I mean by stuff is not typical, like, let's just get in a base formation, day one install, day two, day three, day four install. Like, no. If they got in a rut, he found a play. He was like, we are going to get a first down. If I got to call a flea flicker screen, I'll call it. If I got to call a, a what I'm calling a layered screen, there was one play where he, they faked a wide receiver screen got the defense to roll all the way outside and then threw an, a screen to the same side to Eckler underneath and it turns into like this kind of middle tunnel screen. Like the the amount of creative stuff that Cliff has in the bag is crazy. And the fact that they're willing to deploy it and they have that much in week over week, it just prevents you from getting in these gigantic ruts where you can't move the football Drive after drive after drive after drive. And, it, it, you know, it it makes it so that you don't have to just rely on, like, okay, well, we can't move it passing. Let's run it. We can't move it, run it. Let's pass. It's like, let's get, let's be creative. And the competitiveness that Cliff shows as a play caller, like, I have no doubt that's a huge reason why Dan hired him. And, and I actually hope it's something that, you know, Dan gets asked about because I think it it is on display in this game in a way that, you can't even display it if you're not in a situation where you feel a little bit of desperation. And it's not desperation. It's meeting the moment of what you need to get your team to go in. And Cliff did an outstanding job in this game of that. Even if there's some other qualms I have with maybe giving McNichols a few more carries, whatever, that maybe in hindsight he would go like, yeah, maybe should have done that here or there. It wasn't perfect, but man, that competitiveness will get you a long way. Uh, let's go to Ray and Frederick. Ray, thanks for calling. You are on the Hoffman Show. Hi, thank you, Greg, for taking the call. Um, I just want to ask, of course, it's very, it's very encouraging. For you as the media and everybody else, when you saw Jaden do what he did, you know, behind the scenes in August, did you think that he would be where he is at this moment? Uh, and it's just, yeah, it's, it's a great question. Of and, Ray, the answer is no, because he wasn't here yet. 
And what I mean by that is his growth week over week has been so tremendous. And I think you saw some glimpses of that in training camp, but that's what training camp is for. You expect guys to grow, you know, even maybe rapidly in training camp because in part, sometimes they'll engineer certain situations. And sometimes it's really hard to judge because you don't go back and watch the tape. Like it's all, what can I notice in the moment? And, you know, drills are designed certain ways to give offenses or defenses advantages. And we don't always know that's happening and all this stuff. For him to just start playing NFL games and get better week after week and every single thing that anybody out there is like, well, I want to see this. I wish that he would do more of that. For him to do that stuff, not in a way that he's like hearing the criticism and responding, but because the the questions or criticism, whatever word you want to use, is valid and he's just getting that much better, it's it's unprecedented, frankly, in NFL history as far as I as far as I know and as far as anybody that I've talked to about such things, no one can ever remember anything like this. So uh, that's the long answer. The short answer, Ray, is no. Did not expect this, even though I thought Jaden was going to be pretty good as a rookie. And then the other thing is, with that being said, if there's a chance this year, do you think Adam Pierce will do something drastic? Or it's like, no, I got to wait and see. Because, you know, I think he has something... Or the, you know, the commanders have something right now, and if they can do something, you know, before the trade deadline, I think they should do it. Do you think is that something you see the front office can do or should do? Or Yeah, no, Ray, it's a great oh. question. I appreciate you calling and asking. It's something that I've thought about a lot, especially today as these trades have gone on around the NFL with uh, Buffalo acquiring Amari Cooper, Devontae Adams going to New York, and I don't think either of those guys are necessarily the right guy for here. But I do think that Adam Peters has to seriously look at this and be like, okay, well, if we were on the fence based off our competitiveness on a certain deal, maybe we we push our chips in a little bit sooner. And maybe it changes the timeline too. Like, if you were thinking about being maximally competitive in year three, like, why wouldn't you be ready to go next year? And they've also got a feel of where Jaden is in a way that's even deeper than all of us watching understand. They're with him every day. They They know what landmines might exist out in front and I think because of that like they might still stay like I would still be fairly patient I'm not going to be ultra aggressive I'm not going all in for this year but I do think if you can make a move that makes sense for now and later you do it and I think that's the difference right is like before you don't really care as much about the now and if like something crazy came up where you can get a young player for later okay but that also gives up draft capital and that's probably not something you want to do but I'm just going to use T. Higgins. I know a lot of folks would rather, or J.C. Horn, the, the corner for the Panthers, who they'll obviously see this weekend. Um, you know, d- pick a defense. If Max Crosby or Miles Garrett as is Cleveland and Vegas, or maybe potentially fire sailing players, if those guys become available, okay. But I, the thing is with Higgins, like he's still relatively young. He wants a new contract, and if you can make a trade for him, and say the extra third round pick that you got for Jahan Dotson is the return. And you can agree with T. Higgins on a deal that you like moving forward. I would do it. Because you're hoping to get with one of your picks next year, someone who is a T. Higgins type of player. And we know T. Higgins is good right now. I think he'd be a great fit in in what they want to do. I think he's super competitive, bigger body. Um, and, and I think that would be great. Um, if... Obviously, you have the the chance to get Miles Garrett. Like that's a totally different conversation because now we're talking about major, major draft capital. Miles um, Garrett is not getting traded for a third rounder. Like you're talking at least a first, and that's a different conversation. Max Crosby might be more gettable, and maybe that is something because Crosby. You want to talk about a dude that has a never stop motor? Like Max Crosby could be someone that they're potentially interested in um, and fills a need. And and some of those guys that are a little bit older. Maybe you do bring in if you think they're the right fit for the room, the right fit for the team, and you don't ha- either don't have to commit money to them long term so it doesn't mess with your cap, or you are willing to commit some money to them long term because you have the room because your quarterback's on a rookie contract, and that opens up a world of possibilities for you moving forward to spend money a little bit extra in places that normally you can't because you know you don't have to pay Jaden Daniels until four years from now when uh, presumably the way things are going, he'll be the highest paid quarterback in football and you'll have to think about building your roster completely differently. But for now, yeah, I, I think you you consider, you don't, you don't 
go super hunting. You don't get into bidding wars. You don't do anything crazy. But if you find something that works for now and sets you up for success multiple years from now, I would I would certainly explore those possibilities. 301-230-0980. It's a Vibe Check Tuesday, and we want to know, are you encouraged or discouraged by what you saw for the Commanders against the Ravens? Let's go to AP. AP, thanks for calling. You are on the Hoffman Show. Encouraged, discouraged? Hey, what's going on, Hoffman? What's up, so, bro? Uh, I guess I got a little greedy this weekend. Like, I really, truly thought we could beat the Ravens. And, I mean, it showed in the outcome of the game. Like, you know, a couple things go our way. We get another signature stop, which is, I guess, a lot to ask for from our defense. And I think we get that game. But, uh, you know, you look around the league at the teams that are, the, you know, that are contenders and that are almost a lock to make the playoffs. Like, you look at the teams like Detroit, San Fran, and – you know the different, but what you see with those teams are they not only have good offensive attacks, but they have a good defense as well. And I still think for us to make a a true run, like I don't want to just get a participation trophy. If we're gonna make a run, I want to make a run. You know, as a fan, when we start talking about sacrificing draft capital or you know draft picks per se, you know, in the earlier rounds. Because I, I feel like we have a quarterback that could take us deep in the playoffs, but we we need a defense that can complement his performance. And looking at that Ravens game, you know, playing against a, a big dog in them and, you know, a team that could possibly be bidding for a Super Bowl appearance, I just think, you know, with that measuring stick of a game, we need to address our defense in order to make a good run. So that's why I'm at yeah, AP. I, I, let me ask you one other question, though, because I think you you yes, mentioned sir. a couple of teams that that are interesting, right? What else do the Niners, the Chiefs, the Lions have in common besides a good defense? Pass rush. Uh, as far as offense, I was uh, I was just in general. It's not offense yeah, or defense. There's 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 uh, a specific okay. thing I'm looking for here that they have in common. Yeah. They've been together for a while. And I think, like, yeah, for, yeah. for me... And they have a good organization or front office. A hundred percent. Some of the best in football. Obviously, Adam Peters comes out of that San Francisco organization. Um, Detroit is sending people right. all over, including uh, Brendan Sosna, and I think there's uh, Lance Newmark, obviously their assistant GM. Like, those guys come here from Detroit. Um, you know, Kansas City's been together, Veach and, and Andy Reid forever. And a lot of the players, the key cores of those teams have been together now for multiple years. And I think that's the thing that's, like encouraging in the long term about Washington is they're starting to build the Jaden Daniels, Mike Sanders still, Johnny Newton, Terry McLaurin to an extent, uh, core of players here that is already way ahead of schedule. And obviously they're going to need to add to it and they're going to have to get those things right. Um, but I think that that makes it very interesting when you talk about the thing that you were just talking about. And that's why I appreciate you bringing it up is like, okay, well, if they want to draft the young core that's going to be together, that's their version of Jared Goff and Amon Ross St. Brown or Christian McCaffrey, I guess McCaffrey was traded for, but, you know, Brock Purdy, Debo, all these guys uh, at, at these various spots, obviously Mahomes, Kelsey, et cetera, those are guys you typically draft. And so to bring, like, can T. Higgins or Max Crosby or whoever be their uh, Christian McCaffrey, if you want to use the San Francisco model, or even their Jared Goff? Uh, maybe, but I do think that, that w- that's why, for as excited as people are about the potential for trading for someone, you've raised the excellent counterpoint of, well, that's one less guy that you get to bring in out of the draft that gets to be a part of your franchise from go, and that's how the core of this team is going to be built. Also, before I leave, um, I think we do have Detroit and San Fran on our schedule. Uh, no, I don't think you have e- Yeah, not not this year. So we don't have Detroit on our schedule. No, I don't think actually either of them are on the schedule this year. Um, really, the toughest game left outside of the division games is Pittsburgh. Oh, okay. Because I don't know why I thought we had Detroit. Because I was definitely looking at that game as like a, somewhat of a revenge game for us. Seeing as a uh, what's the uh, coordinator's name? Um, ben Johnson. Johnson. <laughs> yeah. Ben Johnson, how <laughs> how he had us on the plane on the way to go talk to him, and he canceled the interview. 
while we were in route. But, yeah, uh, you know what? I, I think that's kind of worked out for everybody, though. Playoffs. So, but yeah, no. The you thing know, is, you will see good. those those th- those teams in the playoffs if you get there for sure. AP, thanks for the call. Um, yeah, I mean, you're gonna. That's the thing is, can, would I pick Washington over San Francisco this weekend? No. Would I pick them over Detroit this weekend? No. Um, are there a lot of other teams in the NFC that I wouldn't at least consider? No. Let me. I mean, let me look at the NFC scan- standings. I'm sure I'm forgetting someone. Um, but there, there definitely aren't a lot of teams. I mean, Tampa's obviously played well and already beaten Washington. Um, so that's that you have to give them that respect. But do I think that like if they played 10 more times, it's a pretty even five, five split. Yeah, probably. Um, I don't think there's anybody in the NFC East that they can't beat. Um, the entire NFC North, North is crazy. Um, but like depending on how it goes, like I could see them absolutely, uh, beating Minnesota, uh, Green Bay, if Jordan Love starts playing a little bit better, I think they're definitely better. I'd probably pick Green Bay against Washington in a game heads up right now. I don't think there's anybody in the NFC South that I I would – like if the game is at Washington, would I pick Washington over Atlanta? Um, that one's tough. Tampa's tough. Uh, but New Orleans and Carolina, no. And the NFC West outside of San Francisco. Like even Seattle, like they're all over the place. Like – they could, Seattle could beat Washington by 30. Washington could beat them by 30 because that's how Seattle goes. So when you look at the NFC, like this team is very much in the mix, but they also have to take care of business. And just because they have a relatively easy schedule doesn't mean that these are locks because their defense is still a work in progress. But the thing is, I do think by and large, it's making progress, even if there are some significant blips in this Baltimore game. But Baltimore also causes some of those blips because of how unique they are and how talented they are and the fact that they have a two-time MVP who is also, by the way, the current favorite to win the award yet again based off of his performance through six games. Let's go to Noel in Chicago. Noel, thanks for calling. You are on the Hoffman Show. Encouraged, discouraged, happy or sad about the 425 kickoff change? kickoff change i'm happy about the i'm happy about it just in the sense that it makes it easier for our uh our throwing a party for uh all the bears and commanders fans two weeks from now yeah makes us easy makes it a little bit easier that it's at around like 325 <laughs> yeah so, no it's uh, central time that that late window great doing it in eastern time like it's it's perfectly fine if you're watching on tv as someone going to the game and knowing i won't get home till like nine o'clock at night or whatever very selfishly i'm very upset about it but i also totally understand it it's 100 percent the right call anyway let's back back to the ravens game encouraged discouraged <laughs> no i'm i'm actually encouraged by the performance overall and i think that me i thought it was a lot closer than i anticipated because of the fact that you know i don't know People are thinking about this. They miss Brian Robinson a lot during that game. He plays such a pivotal role in the offense that's so underrated. And to me, it wasn't an accident that score over 30 points. It wasn't an accident that we didn't time a possession for the first time in that many weeks. I think, I don't know if we did it in week one, but I know we did it all the way on to the Ravens game. And Brian is just such a good running back with a different change of pace from Austin. So I think, uh, and, and with Nichols, too. So I think really missed having him. So I think that Jaden was able to do what he went through and was able to drop back more, and he obviously is continuing to develop as a passer. It's just going to continue to make us a better team overall and more offensively. But I can't wait to have Brian Robinson back, and I hope he gets back on Carolina. Yeah, no, I, I, I'm glad you brought him up, Noel. It's a great point. Um, thanks for, for the call, as always. Not only did they miss like the change of pace and the difference, like Eckler's been unbelievable this year uh, in terms of being used in these very unique ways and absolutely maximizing his opportunities. But he does not have the best like, hey, let's just line up in the dot and run a duo or an inside zone or whatever and pick the right hole, like straightforward, typical first down running play. And how often have the commander has been in second and four this year because Brian Robinson gets six yards on first down. And there was one play in particular. And of course my bags in the other room with my notebook, because I'm a professional radio host who thinks, why would you need your notes during the show? That's a silly thing that you'd want all the information that you wrote down from watching the game on film. 
why do the work if you can't possibly reference it? So sorry for not having a when in the game this is. But there's there's a play on one of the early drives of the game where Sam Cosme pulls and he hits his block. And like I think he's on the the right side, let's say, of the blocker. And so it Eckler needs to run to the right side of Cosme because the defender is on the left. And Eckler cuts back right into the defender. And you're going, buddy, that's not there's no there's no cutback lane there. Like you're you gotta you gotta run to light, not darkness. You can't run into the the opposite color, run away from it. And it's where the play's designed to go. So it's not even like, you know, oh, oh you're asking him to to get off his track. Like, nope, I'm asking you to follow the track. And that would have easily probably been a four or five yard gain. There's also a ton of bad looks that he's forced to run in. But there's some that I think if Brian Robinson is the running back, or frankly, even McNichols, I thought saw the, you know, he only got a couple of carries, but saw it, I think, pretty well, um, that he could have had bigger gains. And Eckler in space, when it's less less choreographed, less design, incredible. Incredible. And he can certainly hit some uh, in, in as a running back. It's not like he's 100% miss, but like, B Rob's vision. We talk about vision. That's what we're talking about. Do you understand based off the leverage of the blocks where you need to go? And B Rob does that at an extremely high level. And he's obviously super physical and runs really hard and is hard to bring down. Um, but there's also some opportunities in the run game that Jaden, frankly, misses. And I, I think the biggest area where Jaden, like as a passer in this game, he was phenomenal. As a as a run, uh, I don't even know a run game coordinator. He missed uh, because a lot of these runs early in the game, uh, they had RPOs and they had zone reads. And there is one, the, the field goal drive on the second uh, drive of the game, there is a read option where Jaden pulls it and he goes to run. If he hands the ball to Austin Eckler, Eckler hits his head on the goalpost. It is clean. It is out. Eckler, you know, he carries through the fake and runs, even though he doesn't have the ball, and he he runs out of the other side of the hole. And you're going, I wish he had the ball. And it wasn't one of those where like players stopped and gave up and started to pursue the other way. Like Ravens players were scrambling towards Austin Eckler and they couldn't get him. And Jaden missed it. It happens. He gets those right a lot more often than he gets wrong. But there's a couple of key ones where that really hurt them early or, earlier on in the game. And so if B-Rob's there... Does Jaden maybe have a little more confidence to hand that because he's seen B Rob make the most of those carries? And where Jaden's like, ah, maybe I need to make a play here. Does Cliff call a few more runs? And, and does that get them in better down and distances where they stay out of some of these second and third and longs where they struggled in the game? And so they missed B Rob enormously in this game. And hopefully he is back. Um, there's obviously a lot of other things that could have gone wrong, but that's also the nature of a close game. You could call up and give me any one of about seven things that you thought was the difference in the game. And if that thing goes the way you wanted it to, you'd be right. That's how close this game was. It was ultimately a one-score game, 30-23 to at the end. But the question is, next time, can the commanders make those plays? Because there's a lot of games in the NFL that are like this, where it's just, oh, if we just made a couple more plays. And I think, frankly, previous coaches here convinced themselves that they were so close or even good because, oh, if we could just make a couple more plays and we can do that. Like, no, you can't. I think this team can. And that is a big freaking deal. 301-230-0980 is the phone number. Are you encouraged or discouraged by the commander's performance against the Ravens? Well, Ravens, ultimately a loss, but one that is receiving critical acclaim. Uh, Steve, thanks for holding. Uh, Encouraged, discouraged here on this Vibe Check Tuesday. Yeah, I'm definitely encouraged. Um, first of all, thank you for taking my call. I love the show. Thank you. Um, no problem. Um, definitely encouraged. Uh, we kn- we already knew coming in that the defense is a few impact players away from, you know, really making a difference. So we already knew that. But I, it just confirmed that the, off- the offense, whenever they get a chance, whenever they get the ball, they're good to score at least. 30 points a game, as long as they don't turn it over and they get possession. Um, Jaden is showing me that not only can he get the job done, even if you kind of trick him up at first, eventually he's going to figure you out. And that show, and they, he showed me that in the Ravens game. Um, a couple of other things that I like, um, we definitely look good on special teams. We know we got a kicker. 
Um, Tress Way is still the best punter in the game. So the special teams look real good. They they definitely gave us a chance pinning them um, twice inside the, inside the 10. And then finally, um, Terry McLaurin. Um, it's, it's been all this debate about whether Terry McLaurin is an elite receiver. Is he as good as these other guys who have good quarterbacks? But, no, he, he reminded everybody on Sunday that when he gets the ball, he's just as good as these guys that we consider elite. And uh, finally, before I land my plane, the one thing that's got me real encouraged is that when you look at our, all the other teams in our division, they look like crap. Um, the Giants <laughs> got the best. De- the Giants got a good defense, but they can't score. Yep. The, um, um, Dallas is a dumpster fire, and and Philly's Philly like, hold my is, beer. But the um, but the but the coaching um, the coaching is wacko. So yeah, yeah. When you look at our division, I feel I feel real encouraged, and I land my plane there. Yeah, no, Steve, great call, a lot of great stuff, and I'm glad you brought up the special teams point. I want to circle back to that real quick. If you tell me, hey. We're going to have to get some stops against the Ravens to win this game. Not a ton, but a couple. And and twice, we're going to pin the, the Ravens back inside the 10. I'd be like, I like our chances. If, you, if I'm Dan Quinn and you told me that, I'd be like, sweet. We're going to win this football game. You gave up two 90-yard drives. And that's, that's a tough look. Most teams aren't doing that to you. That is a Baltimore-specific problem. And they do it getting some big chunk plays on some stuff that they do really well. And part of the reason they do it really well is they have personnel that allows them to do stuff that others don't. They can put Patrick Ricard on the field, run a play action fake, legitimately guard or uh, protect your against your edge player, against your best pass rushers with their fullback because he's the size of an offensive lineman. He's got great feet, great strength, and he's legitimately 300 pounds. And by the way, that run fake, you got to sell sell out because if they give the ball to Derrick Henry and you don't sell out, well, now you're giving up a huge chunk run and they gave up a couple of those. Okay, well, now we're going to sync up and we're going to go greet that fullback in the hole. Oh, crap. Now we left a ton of space behind and uh, the pocket's moving, so it's hard to get your pass rush. And uh, because Patrick Ricard can pr- pass protect against the defensive end one-on-one, you got double teams inside on Allen and Payne, so they're, they're nullified. Like, and you're rolling the pocket away from the other edge. Like, good luck. Good luck. And now Benjamin St. Juice or Mike Sanders still or Noah Igbenogane, all of whom got beat on this exact thing, are having to chase a crossing route 25 yards across the field, and they're chasing Zay Flowers, and that ain't going to work. And there's no second level. There's no plug defender making that hard because they're sucked up in the line of scrimmage as a linebacker. Like, that is Baltimore-specific problems. But if you tell me, hey, special teams are going to give you a, a couple of good field position uh, things moving forward per game, punting doesn't sound as bad. It was cooler when they didn't punt. Trust Way can have another couple of weeks off. That's perfectly fine with me. But if they're going to have to, like when you face Chicago in two weeks, like Carolina's one thing. Well, let's go to Chicago. That Chicago defense is nasty. You're going to have to play some field position. But their offense, do I trust them to go 90 yards multiple times in a game with Caleb at quarterback? Not really. Could they? Yeah, they're talented. But is is that the way they want to live? Absolutely not. 301-230-0980. Last one, let's go to Mutu. Mutu, thanks for calling. You are on the Hoffman Show. Last vibe check is with you. Hey, Craig. Thank you, man. Um, As I was going into this Ravens game, I didn't think we would win the game. Like everyone else, you know, I'd say, all right, let's see how we measure up. But I come out of this game very encouraged, man, because, like you said earlier, a few plays and the outcome of this game could have been different. I'm thinking the block field goal, that ridiculous, silly P.I. call in St. Jude's on the side, um, Dorrance Armstrong going out early. I think all these had a big part in the game. But then I'm also looking at Baltimore, other than KC being their nemesis, this is a team I'm actually looking to win the Super Bowl. So for us to go in there and play like we did, I'm really encouraged, man. And let me give a little props to to the um, to the GM. And if he's going to follow the philosophy from San Fran, that would be building our old line, which I got to tell you, has been playing real good, man. And our D line and linebackers, and we build out. And that I think is sustainable. And Jaden, man, his teammates are following him because he's just setting by example. Whether it's coming in early to practice, work ethic, all that stuff. 
And one more thing. I really love the way the relationship between Dan Quinn, the coaches, and the players. We just don't see that kind of emotion and love. No knock against Ron, but standing over there like a mummy, it was just dead, man. But to watch <laughs> these guys really, I just feel they'll be pulling real hard for each other. And if I'm another team, I don't want to play us, man. I'm going to tell you like that. But that's all I got, though. Thanks, Greg. Great end to the segment, Mutu. Appreciate your call. Um, yeah, I mean, that is, as well said, I wouldn't want to play Washington right now. Preparing for Jaden feels like a nightmare. This is a team that plays together. They play hard. You're not going to have them beat themselves. You're going to have to beat them, which is exactly who you want to be in year one of a rebuild. And by the way, there's a lot of teams right now with the way they're playing. They can't say that. The, the fact that they've gotten this this early is really magical, and it starts with number five, but it does... I mean, it really starts with it starts in a way with Josh Harris, then goes to Adam Peters, down to Dan Quinn, to the coordinators, to the position coaches. But on the field, it starts with five, and that's really special for a rookie. And uh, I, I hope that even no matter how the rest of the season goes, we should enjoy what uh, we see with him, and, and hopefully uh, we get to enjoy it for the better part of a decade or you know two decades to come. This is the Hoffman Show on the T980 and the Odyssey app.